Hey y'all, it's so good to see you again. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Taylor and I'm a full stack developer living in Texas. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about my WebStorm setup. Tailoring your editor to your needs is so important. So I'm gonna show you the plugins and settings that I use on my editor and then hopefully you can take some of these ideas and apply it to your workflow, which would be super awesome. So let's dive in and see what plugins and settings I'm using for my WebStorm. Let's go. The first one I want to talk about is called Import Cost. Import Cost is a plugin that calculates the size of your libraries that you import. Simple enough, right? It's so useful. So going over here, I'm going to switch to this other project. So let's take a look here. So at the top of this app.js file, this is a Node.js application. So here you can see the different sizes for these different libraries. So Express, Mongoose, Body Parser. Here is the inline text that you get with the import cost plugin you get the actual size of the file 786 kilobytes and then you get what an estimated calculation is for a compressed size so when your app is compressed and minified in production this is the size that it will actually be import cost is a good way to kind of manage your libraries and hopefully it will point out libraries that are really big and taking up a lot of space on your application. This can be very useful for identifying those kind of libraries. Or if you just want to see the size of your libraries and you're a master at knowing the size of the stuff that you're importing, then this is really good to see just the general sizes of your libraries. Okay, the next plugin is called React Snippets. And you're probably familiar with this if you've used VS Code because there's a very popular React plugin on VS Code called React Templates, I think it is. This works very similarly in that you just use abbreviations to tab out full templates for React. And let me give you a demonstration here. So if I'm just in a blank file and I type in like RSC, you can see it gives you suggestions here that pops up. I just hit tab and then there you go. You have a template for this component and it's in a style of a uh, ES6 kind of template and there's many different ones you can do there's like RSCP which creates a stateless react component and you can also create other things like you can create classes you can create functions you can create prop type declarations just so much stuff you can even create methods with this so it is a really convenient tool for quickly creating new pages in react and I find it very useful when creating React applications because it saves a lot of time. The next one is called String Manipulation. String Manipulation is so cool. It is so very powerful. So let me show you kind of what this does. So I'm going to go back to this application here. And I have these different variable names. So what I can do with string manipulation is I can double click on one of them. I can go here and you can see it's presented in like this drop down menu system, string manipulation here, and you have a bunch of options. And all these are things that string manipulation can do for you. So if I go to switch case, I can actually change the kind of standard for this variable name. So right now it's in camel case, but say I want the screaming snake case. I can click it and it automatically converts this variable name to screaming snake case. Why you would ever use that, I don't know, but if you wanted to, you could. And there's also different ones here, like you can do Pascal case. This is super common for class names. And this just makes it so easy to change variables on the fly to a different standard. And you can also use it to adjust text so here i can go to align and i can align by let's say like section and here you can see it tabbed all that over so if you wanted to edit massive amounts of text and align it just the way you want you can be very precise with this tool you can also convert things to different types of encoding so if i go to encode decode i can choose like encode to hex and then it choose choose your char set. I'll just do the UFT8, click OK, 
and there we go it's converted the documentation has a whole bunch of cool stuff they have a bunch of cool demos where they have like a whole comma separated data sheet just in text and then you can use string manipulation to like tab it out into readable columns do all sorts of really cool stuff tab nine tab nine is a autocomplete suggestion tool but it is so cool how it runs under the hood because it uses AI and machine learning to make suggestions. So in your editor already, if I type out const and then I type in like user routes, actually that's not a very good example, I'll just do like console.log. And you can see here, it's giving me a suggestion from the actual IDE itself. And probably a better example is if I do like try and then I do like catch, you can see that it's giving me suggestions down here from the actual editor itself. But tab nine gives me these suggestions up here with this kind of purple blue emblem here. And it is using machine learning to make those suggestions. So it's much more powerful. So if I start doing console.log or just console, it automatically starts suggesting things to me. And because we're in an error state here in this catch, it suggests to use a console.error so I can do this. It knows that the parameter that I passed in was ERR and it suggests that for me. I can also do like console.log gives me that suggestion and I can start typing in like hello world and see it automatically gives me the suggestion with the explanation point because that is a common thing that people type in console.logs. This tool is super cool. It has a paid version and the paid version unlocks so much more functionality. It will suggest to you like whole blocks of code, which is just insane. It also has a cloud feature with the paid version. And I found this tool by watching a video posted by engineering with YouTube, which I highly recommend that you check out his channel because he has such amazing content. I'll link his channel down in the description and I just fell in love with it. It's so cool and it's one that I'm going to add to my toolbox from now on. Okay, the next one is called Code With Me and this is a brand new feature introduced to WebStorm just in like the latest release and it's really geared towards pair programming. What it does is it allows you to generate a code that you can share with someone else and it will give that someone else an editor that mirrors what you're seeing and it will display like your cursor and you can follow along with whatever the inviter is typing out or looking at in the current state. You can also edit code along with the inviter if the inviter has given you permissions to do so. Let's Let's check that out real quick. So if I go over to the, let's just go over to a blank one here. And let's say that I want to enable access and copy link invitation here. It asks for my permissions. It will check automatically start a voice call. So it will automatically try to get you on a call with whoever you're inviting. I'm just gonna disable that and I'll do enable access. Cool, and now it says link copied send to the people that you want to send it to. So if I go up here and I paste in this code, hit enter, it's going to bring me to this and it's going to just say, wait a bit. And it's going to give me a download link. So I'm going to hit download. It downloads this client launcher, which is completely separate from WebStorm, but it looks just like WebStorm. So the cool thing about this is that you don't need WebStorm or a JetBrains IDE to actually start coding along with someone. It will provide this for you and it's just going to wait for approval. So I need to go back to WebStorm. I need to hit accept. And then now it says code with me joined. And if I go back here, you can see this. So let me move this over here. And then I have this here, I'm gonna close this out. So now we have two editors open. I'm on the left and then the joiner is on the right. So if I am on the left as me and I start typing in like console.log, you can see it mirrors it on the other side. And if I go over here to the guest, I can hit like enter and I get there is no right access privilege provided by host. So I can only see what the host is displaying. 
as the host, I can go over here and I can do permissions and security. I can say edit files, apply, and bam, look at this. Now, as the guest, I can start typing in stuff and it will reflect on the other side. Hello from guest. I can't type. Okay, well, that's terrible. And yeah, that is just so cool how you can do that. This unlocks so many possibilities for like pair programming or giving a presentation to a client. There are so many use cases for this and I absolutely love this feature. I'm so excited that WebStorm introduced this and it seems very well thought out and it, and it performs pretty well. So I really recommend that you give this a shot. The next plugin is called Nyan Cat Loader. And while this isn't very productive, it is super fun. And if you are familiar with JetBrains IDEs, you know that it can index for a while if you're first starting a new project and it's trying to load all those indexes, especially in a large project. It can take like a couple minutes. And Nyan Cat Progress Loader saves you from just looking at that boring progress bar, but instead now you can watch Nyan Cat dance across the loading bar and it is just so magical and amazing. If I go here and I open recent and I just open this project, I'll do new window. Let's see if it pops up. Oh, you saw it for a split second. It didn't stay on long because it's not indexing, but it is there. You can check it out by going to settings, plugins, and Nyan Cat progress bar there. And it's just a little Nyan Cat that goes across the screen. Something fun, something unique, and it is kind of like a talking piece for your editor, um, but not really productive. Okay, now let's talk WebStorm settings. So the most obvious setting that I have here is I have my project directory on the right hand side instead of the left. It comes defaulted on the left and I put it on the right by going up here and selecting setting, it says move to, and then originally it's here left top. So it's this is the default view that you get. I go to move to the right top and then it puts it over here. I find this so much more productive because you see the code right here on the left. And then if you want to switch to a different file, you just double click here. And then that directory is out of the way. It's not distracting and you get right into the code. I find this very useful. Going into my settings here and I decided to make this video on Windows very purposefully because I use the font consolas on Windows. This comes built in with Windows. You don't need to download a separate one. And I think it mirrors the Apple font very closely. It's very appealing and I love editing with this font. I usually have it set between 16 to 18 depending on my mood really. Sometimes I think my vision is better than it is and I'll go to 16 and then other times 18 is just more natural. And then as far as the default behavior, if I go here, I like to check this widescreen tool window layout because what that does is if I go down to the terminal, it stops it right at the edge here. So it doesn't take up the full width of the editor, which is really nice. I like that. And then going back into the settings, I also have going into code styles for the HTML, JavaScript, TypeScript. I always have my tab size set at four and I always use the tab character. I like this because it spaces out everything really nicely. If I go to just a file that doesn't have it spaced out like, let's go to here and then I'll do uh, control alt L and it didn't really do anything. So let's go to here. This one isn't formatted. So I'll go control alt L and you can see it spaces it out very nicely. I like having that for tab space. And I have that set for TypeScript, um, EJS. I have it set for JSON, Markdown, Vue, and my YAML. I also use single quotes in all my spaces. I really like the single quotes. And then specifically for JavaScript, I have the trailing commas removed. And then I always have a semicolon to terminate statements. I know that it's not required, but I do like my semicolons. Going out of settings on the general 
screen here, I have this toolbar which isn't enabled by default, but I find it really useful because you have quick access to your Git controls, which is so important. You have access to pull, you have access to commit, and to get this on here, you go to view, appearance, and you click this toolbar. See, now it's gone, this is the default view. So we'll check that, and now you have it there. I find this super useful, and it has upped my productivity so much, I highly recommend it. All right, guys, that is my WebStorm setup. I hope you enjoyed this and found some of these things useful and learned a new plugin or a setting that you really like. That would be so awesome. And thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please leave a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, please hit that subscribe button. And let me know what you find useful in WebStorm. If you have a cool plugin or setting that I didn't mention and you wanna let the world know, or at least my channel know, then please drop a comment and let us know. That'd be great to hear. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye-bye.